It's been more than two years since the Mueller report was released, and in that time, we've mostly moved on from it. Rarely do you hear about Russian coordination and the Trump campaign anymore, or the special counsel's various behind-the-scenes legal maneuvers to get to the bottom of it all. If you need proof it's been pushed into the realm of the academic, Robert Mueller himself is even teaching a law school course on it this fall. We've been told again and again there was nothing there. But today, we're getting new insight from Donald Trump's own White House counsel, who testified to how close the former president came to a, quote, point of no return. House Democrats just released a transcript of Don McGahn's closed-door testimony from last Friday, the culmination of a two-year legal battle to hear from him. McGahn described Trump as becoming increasingly erratic, reaching an inflection point when the president asked McGahn to raise possible Mueller conflicts of interest with the DOJ. McGahn said, with that, I meant a point of no return. If the acting attorney general received what he thought was a direction from the counsel to the president to remove a special counsel, he would either have to remove the special counsel or resign. We are still talking about the Saturday Night Massacre decades and decades later. It was time to hit the brakes and not make a phone call to Rod Rosenstein to raise the issue that the president had continued to raise with me. What you just heard, that's Donald Trump in effect trying to get Robert Mueller fired. McGahn also testified that he repeatedly warned Trump that his attempts to remove Mueller could amount to obstruction of justice and suggested Trump lied when he said he had no intention of firing Mueller. McGahn said, quote, he certainly entertained the idea, certainly seemed to ask a number of people about it, certainly had a number of conversations with me about something along those lines. Here to help us understand all this is Bob McQuaid, professor at the University of Michigan Law School, former U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of Michigan. Bob, thanks for coming back on the show. Uh, this is breaking news today. It's a long 241-page document that just came out. McGahn's testimony, of course, was limited to the scope of the Mueller probe, not any of the president's. Multiple other scandals, the former president's. But did it answer lingering questions that you had about obstruction of justice in particular? What's left on the table for you now, two years later? Well, I think the, the evidence is there. It certainly amplified what was included in the Mueller report. He uh, reaffirmed the accuracy of what he told Robert Mueller, and that amounts to obstruction of justice, in, in my mind. Uh, he, asked, uh, he was asked by Donald Trump to fire Robert Mueller to end the investigation into Russia. And then when news came out about that request, uh, he, Donald Trump asked Don McGahn to create a false document that would deny that that had ever happened. That's classic obstruction of justice. And so uh, recall that Robert Mueller had said, uh, you know, DOJ pol policy precludes me from charging a sitting president, but I'm collecting this evidence while memories are fresh and documents are yes. available so that when Donald Trump is no longer president, this evidence will be available. At the time in 2018, Republicans were positive they told us they were positive Donald Trump would never fire Robert Mueller. Paul Ryan and Mark Meadows said there's no way he'd do it. Most Republicans wouldn't join bipartisan bills to protect the special counsel's job. And yet this testimony makes plain it was on the table for that president. McGahn told House lawmakers he was disappointed when Trump disputed his testimony to the special counsel. McGahn says Trump certainly entertained the idea, certainly seemed to ask a number of people. And even talked with Chris Christie about it. It's amazing it's taken this long for this to come out. Yes, um, you know, Donald Trump has repeatedly denied that he ever considered firing Robert Mueller, but Don McGahn said that he did. He told Robert Mueller that, and he repeats these things again. And when uh, asked about how he feels that Donald Trump called him a liar, he says it's disappointing because it's just not true. In fact, it was Don McGahn who talked him out of it, fearing that it would be another Saturday night massacre if Don McGahn had done what Donald Trump directed him to do, which was to call Rod Rosenstein and tell him to fire the general counsel. And so, uh, uh, by by pushing back, Don McGahn served Donald Trump, the president, very well. Uh, but to see him turn it around and treat Don McGahn not so well is a reminder that with Donald Trump, loyalty is a one-way street. <laughs> and yet they continue to give their loyalty to him. All of the stories about all of these former Trump people always come back to the same place, Bob. Why didn't they just quit, save themselves, save their <laughs> principles if they had any speak out against him at the time not now he testifies that he tried to warn trump off quote knocking Mueller out or risk potential obstruction of justice when asked if trump was concerned he himself could be hurt by asking mcgann to remove the special counsel mcgann says certainly yeah 
Does any of McGahn's testimony change anything legally for Trump, Bob, and whether there indeed was obstruction? Will we ever see Trump prosecuted for obstruction of justice, a serious crime for which normal people go to prison? I, I think, yes, because of renewing this issue in, in the public domain, I think it will increase the pressure on the Justice Department to do something about this. Now, of course, we don't know. They may be making these decisions right now. They may be drafting an indictment right now, for all we know. Um, but there's always an important question. First question is, is the evidence sufficient to charge the case? I believe the answer is yes. But then there's a second question that prosecutors ask themselves before bringing charges. Is this in the best interest of justice to bring in this case. There are a lot of reasons not to, uh, you know, out of fairness and resource allocation and other kinds of things. I think there can be nothing more important than bringing a case like this to hold accountable a president who abused the privileges of his office to deter future presidents from engaging in the same conduct. I hope that yes. that conversation is occurring in the halls of the Justice Department. I mean, the tough on crime conservatives tell us that these punishments are deterrents. So why not use it uh, on their own leader. One thing that's interesting is we hear again today from Don McGahn that the president, when the special counsel was appointed, he slumped in his chair. He said, you know, my presidency is over. He used certain words that we can't say on TV. Um, we also learned that Don McGahn told him he could be criminally liable if he went down this path. And yet the irony is the special counsel never actually got rid of Trump from the presidency. Trump survived Robert Mueller. And cr in terms of criminal liability, as we've just been talking about, is this DOJ, is Merrick Garland's DOJ, Merrick Garland, who is testifying today, is his DOJ really going to go after Trump in the way that a lot of liberals, a lot of Democrats would like it to go after Trump? Um, well, I, I don't know, but I think that the early indications of Merrick Garland is that he is an adherent to independence, to the rule of law, and to nonpartisanship. But all these decisions that he has been making, uh, I hope, um, are building credibility with the public, that he is not somebody who is going to make decisions based on favoring one po political party or the other. Uh, but in this case, I think that there is objective evidence of obstruction of justice, and it would be a non-political decision to charge Donald Trump with the crime of obstruction of justice here. So I'm still hoping that they may reach that conclusion. Of course, they may know things that are unknown to the public about the strength of the yeah. evidence or about the merits of bringing such a, a charge. But based on all that we've seen, and we've seen a lot in the Mueller report and then again today in this deposition testimony from Don McGahn, it seems like there is a very strong case for obstruction of justice against Donald Trump. I'd be very interested to see if Merrick Garland's reputation, especially with liberals, survives close contact with Trump and Trump's legal issues, because Robert <laughs> Mueller's didn't. Uh, Bob McQuaid, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for your analysis tonight. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen. And make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.